Flute Masterclass. What we will cover today, air and breathing, embouchure and tone production, playing position, hand position, and fingers, articulation, balancing, blending, practice routine, and other helpful tidbits. Let's look at how we use our air and how we breathe while playing the flute. To breathe properly, you need to take a deep breath in, filling from your abdomen up, not from your shoulders. Don't breathe in through your nose. Breathe in through your mouth. As you exhale, hold your abdominal muscles in. It will help you control the air. Do not hold your breath. So it is a continuous flow of in and out. But you hold your abdominal muscles in to support the air so that you can control how much air goes out as you play. So let's try that. Breathe in. Exhale. Holding your stomach in. If you let your stomach relax, your air will go out too fast. And you won't be able to hold a tone very long. Now, what's very important for tone production in addition to your air is your embouchure, the muscles in your mouth to form the shape that you need to play the instrument. There are two schools of thought. Nina Perloff says in one of her videos on YouTube, I'm going to start off by trying it with your head joint only. You place your instrument on your chin, not on your lip. It's in the little hook part of your chin. So if you were to have, this is what was your face, your nose, and here's your chin, then you would make the flute rest in this little part right there, in that little crook under between your bottom lip and the wider part of your chin. You will angle the air down, angle the air down, so angle it down, okay? And you're going to roll your instrument out slightly so you're not covering up the hole. So you're not rolling out your head joint, you're rolling your instrument out just a little bit. More like maybe a millimeter or so. But you're going to roll it out so that you're not covering up the hole with your bottom lip. Okay? And experiment and angle the air to the left towards the crown of the flute or angle the air downwards towards the end of the flute tube or towards the foot joint. See which one works better for you. Then try playing with the head joint uh, only playing the pitch and then produce the biggest sound that you can. Then put your flute together and do the same thing. Sir James Galway has a different view. First, he suggests using your head joint only at first, instead of the whole instrument. Then take your bottom lip and put it over your top lip. And then you blow across the flute. To play your high notes, you're going to redirect your air downward. Not down in the instrument, but down and still across the head joint. Do not pull down on your lip. That's a mistake that a lot of flute players make, a lot of young flute players, is that when they have their instrument on their lip, they're pulling down on it, and that causes your lip to open up. Your air is to open up your lips, not you. So don't let the instrument pull your lips apart. Okay? And then once you're able to produce your sound, then put your flute together and try it with your flute.
Remember, always project your sound. You want your sound to leave your instrument and go and reach the person that is in the farthest part of the room. So always project as if you want them to hear you. If you play your instrument um, only loud enough for you to hear, then you're the only one that's going to really hear it. So you make sure that you put enough air and enough effort behind it to project your sound so that you will have a nice clear sound that can be heard throughout the room. Now let's look at your playing and your hand position. First, you should always sit up straight with your feet flat on the floor. That means that your ankles are not crossed, your feet are not bent back underneath your chair where your toes are touching the floor, your feet are not hooked around the legs of the chair, you're not sitting on your legs, but you're sitting with both feet flat on the floor. Number one, make sure that the hole on your lip plate is in line with the keys on the flute, not turned in or out. So this is your lip plate right here, this part here. So if you're looking at the hole, which is right there, make sure it is in line with the keys. So when you look at it, so let's say this is your eye, and you're looking at it, you're looking right in a straight line. You see the hole in line with the keys. Make sure the foot joint, which is this part, and the ball part of the rod, so there is a little rod right here. Make sure that's in line with the keys of the flute as well. Okay, so it is in line with the keys also. If your fingers are very long, you may have to adjust so that you can reach them more comfortably. But in general, they should be in line with the middle of the keys on the flute. The flute rests on the lower joint of the index finger of your left hand. Okay, at the lower joint of the index finger. So if you were looking at your finger, say this is your finger, okay, and this is the inside of your finger. So then you have this little line here, and then you have this other little line right here where your finger bends, okay. The flute rests on the lower joint, okay, of the index finger. So it's resting right here in this little middle part, right there. Because when you're holding holding the flute, when you're holding the flute, this finger is actually playing a key, but the flute is resting on the side of that finger. Okay? Your head joint is pointed towards your left shoulder. Your elbows are comfortably down. They're not up in the air like like you're flying away, like your arms are going to flap and fly away. The flute is not parallel to your shoulders. Okay? So you're not trying to hold it way up in the air and make it very uncomfortable. When you're sitting or standing, turn so that you're looking over your left elbow. And make sure that the fingers of your right hand are curved not flat, curved. Number one, you must have a constant stream of air when tonguing. Let the air continue to flow while your tongue is moving. Don't hold your breath. Number two, do not stop the air when tonguing. Number three, use the tiniest amount of tongue to say the syllable to or do. Don't let your tongue go past your teeth. Number four, practice saying a lot of two syllables over and over again to build endurance. Two, 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 two. Number five, when slurring, do not tongue the notes under the slur. 
and keep a steady stream of air. Blending and balancing. Listen as you play. Number one, do not try to hear yourself while playing with the group. Number two, blend your sound with the lower instruments. So you listen to the lowest instruments and you're going to blend your sound inside of those instruments as if you're fitting your sound inside of their instrument. Number three, aim to sound like one flute with a large sound within your section. So use a lot of air. You remember this? This is the balance pyramid, except it's upside down this time. And you notice the dynamic levels for the different instruments are shown if they're playing all at the same time. If you have the melody, of course, you're always going to be louder than everybody else. But when you're playing chords, follow this method. If you hear yourself above everyone else, then you are too loud. Back off on your sound. You are overblowing. Or, two, you're playing with poor tone quality. Adjust your embouchure, air support, posture, etc. Number three, or you're out of tune. So tune yourself. Things to help with blending. Number one, make your sound disappear into the next lowest instrument. For example, the flute into the second clarinet. Number two, make your sound part of the tuba sound. Number three, be a, camp, be a chameleon, not a zit. In other words, you know, a chameleon always blends in with its surroundings. A zit sticks out like a sore thumb. Number four, keep your sound focused. Don't overblow. Practicing. How to practice. Find a room with no distractions. Always warm up with long tones. Warm up exercises, scales, things your director is giving you to practice on. Number three, warm up in the low register before moving to the high register. That gives your lips time to warm up and the blood to start circulating through there and making your lips more supple before you try to play high notes. And number four, do not play fast. Number five, make a plan of what to practice. Your scales, technical studies, intervals, rhythms, things you wrote on your music that your band director says you need to fix or remember. Work on those areas that you need to fix first by playing through the, playing through the music is not practicing. Work on a problem area slowly, gradually building up to the correct tempo. If you can't play it slowly, then you can't play it. Finish off with a song you enjoy. Other tidbits. When the flute gets cold by being in a cold room, cold car, air conditioner blowing on the flute, the pitch will be flat. So blow warm air into your instrument before playing and after sitting for an extended period of time without playing. If you're still flat, push your head joint in one millimeter at a time until you can play in tune. When the flute gets hotter by temperature by sitting in a hot car, heat turned up too high in the house or the building, hot stage lights, the pitch of the flute will play sharp. So. Gradually pull out your head joint one millimeter at a time until you can play in tune. These are the notes that tend to be sharp on most flutes. Pause the video to look at it more closely. Correction for sharp pitches. Blow less loudly. Use less airspeed. Aim more downward with your upper lip. Relax. Too much tension can lead to playing sharp overall. These are the notes that tend to be flat on the flutes. To correct flat pitches, blow a faster air. Aim more upward so the air is aimed at the flute with a higher angle. Move lip corners back so the lips are closer to the teeth. So these are some suggestions that I've gotten from my experience and from others that I have searched uh, and done some research on. And hopefully these will be helpful to you. Have a good day.